Welcome again. Today we study human blood type as we relate human blood to two important topics in genetics, the topics of multiple alleles and codominance. We will end the lesson by combining this knowledge to the previous lesson on the Hardy-Weinberg equation to examine the frequency of these multiple alleles in human populations. So you might have been asked the question, what is your blood type? And the truth about this is that human blood type is determined by several proteins in our blood. But the most common group of blood proteins that we refer to when someone asks your blood type is the ABO system. In the human population, there are three alleles responsible for this ABO system. The system of positive and negative that you hear people speak about also, the RH system, is another blood group system, and so is the MN system. But the most common one is the ABO system, and this is the one that we are speaking about in today's lesson. There are three alleles that determine this ABO system, and they are the alleles for type A blood, the allele for type B blood, and the allele for type O blood. But for a given individual, there can only be a pair of these alleles in the genotype. So human beings possess any of these three as a pair in their genotype. When a person possesses both A and B, then neither allele is dominant nor recessive. What happens is that they both express themselves at the same time. And when this occurs, we refer to that as codominance. Allele O is recessive to both A and B. With the existence of these multiple alleles, it means that there will be six possible genotypes in the human population. And they're listed here for you. The homozygous A, AO, which is the heterozygote. But both of these genotypes give type A blood. A similar situation with B. But because of codominance type AB, and then, of course, there is the homozygous recessive, which gives us type O blood. So with these four phenotypes in the population, we have six genotypes that give rise to the four possible types of blood in the ABO system. Two of these four are very easy to identify. If someone possesses type O blood, then we can easily identify their genotype. If someone possesses type AB blood, then we can immediately know that their genotype is AB. But if somebody has type B blood or type A blood, then we're not certain as to whether they are homozygous or heterozygous. How can we tell if somebody possesses type O blood, type AB blood, type A blood, or type B blood? The basis of this classification system lies in a fairly simple explanation. If someone possesses blood type A, it means that they would have certain kinds of proteins in their blood that we can term as antigen A. When antigen A encounters blood that also contains antigen A, then there is no production of antibodies. If 
type A blood encounters antigen B blood, then we have the production of antibodies. And the blood would have this clumping or agglutination occurring as a result of the foreign antigen being affected by the antibody. A similar thing would happen if type B blood encounters antigen A from type A blood. Again, antibodies would be produced to reject the type A blood. People possessing type AB blood, however, do not manufacture any antibodies. And as a result, it's possible for them to receive blood of type A, type B, type AB, and type O. It's for this reason that we refer to blood type AB as the universal acceptor. And finally, we've got blood type O. Blood type O produces no antigens. So, samples of blood type O can be given to people of any other kind of blood. And it's for this reason that we refer to type O as the universal donor. Type A blood does produce antibodies, however, so it would reject type A blood, type B blood, type AB blood, and would only be able to mix with its own type O blood. It would have no problem interacting with a blood type that has no antigens. Here we have a simple test to determine blood type. And by determining blood type, the only thing that we identify is the phenotype. We cannot tell whether individuals are AO or AA. We can simply say that they might be type A blood or type B blood. But we do know that if someone has type AB blood, that they must have the genotype AB. And if someone has type O blood, that they must have the genotype OO. Here we have a test to determine not just the ABO blood system, but the RH factor also. So we see that the blood types are characterized not just according to a, B, and O, but also positive and negative. Let's focus on the A, B, O system. And here we see antigen A being introduced. And antigen A is produced or is present in type A blood. So we would not expect that type A blood would have an agglutination with antigen A. And we can see in this picture that there is very little clumping visible. When antigen A interacts with type B blood, we can see the distinct clump being produced. When antigen A interacts with type O blood, when antigen A interacts with type AB blood, which produces no antibodies, there's no reaction. Maybe you can talk us through this column now. Antigen B, blood type A, clumping. Antigen B, blood type B. Antigen B, blood type O. 
distinct clumping antigen B, blood type AB, again the yellow color, no clumping. So the reason why we can say that the ABO blood group system is an example of multiple alleles is because there are three alleles that determine blood type. But at any given time, only two of those make up an individual's genotype. And we can say that the ABO blood system is also an example of codominance because allele A and B, when found together, both express themselves. Now let's combine our work on the Hardy-Weinberg equation in a previous lesson. And if you are in need of going over that lesson, you can click right here and then return to this problem. In a human population, Blood group is determined by three alleles, A, B, and O. Alleles A and B exhibit codominance, and when they occur together, the genotype AB is expressed as a unique blood type or phenotype. To verify this, a simple test can be performed. Allele O is recessive to both A and B. When allele O occurs in the homozygous state, Blood type O is the result. It is also possible to verify this phenotype and genotype from a simple test. Individuals with blood type A and B can be either heterozygous or homozygous. And this cannot be verified from a simple test. We can identify type A, but we're not sure if it's AO or AA. The same for type B. We're not sure if it's BO or BB. So there are six genotypes. So let's use the concepts from this lesson and the one from the lesson on the Hardy-Weinberg equation to challenge ourselves with this problem.